Welcome back to the channel, fellow apes, unite. It's me, Adam, and you are watching Unlimited Options Investing. And I'm actually not an ape myself, although I am standing united with you guys. I'm just standing on the sidelines watching uh, things unfold as they happen. So we're going to be talking more about AMC stock. And it actually trades very nicely on the charts. It trades very technically. So uh, it's not just a crazy stock going all over the place. Uh, it does have uh, very interesting price action as well as GME. Uh, a little bit less so than AMC, and we can actually look at the chart for that one as well in this video. Uh, but we're going to talk more about that, and I'll give my thoughts on it. So if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Hit that subscribe button here at Unlimited Options Investing. We talk everything from options, stocks, crypto, momentum stocks, and we're investing for the long term. As well, as always, smash that like button, and let's get started. All right, so it's currently trading for $40.01, and it's only up a measly 1,890.55% a year to date, only just shy of 2,000%. And I want to bring your guys' attention to uh, earlier this year when we first had that first short squeeze. Now, I want you guys to imagine nothing after February here exists. So if you were looking at this chart back on February 1st, for example, and you click year to date, what you would see is like a, a graph that looks something like this. You have that spike and then it leveled off like this afterward, right? But because back in May, at the end of May or whatever, June time, when the second squeeze happened and it went uh, pretty much 5x <laughs> from its price, uh, this portion over here looks so much smaller because of the price action that happened over here. And this just brings me to compounding in general when it comes to investing, is that people, people often think, oh, it's gone up so much, could it possibly go up more? And actually, I want to bring us to Tesla for a second. I'll go back to AMC in a moment now. But we look over here, example, let's say here, uh, back at the beginning of the pandemic when this happened, okay? So this entire rectangle over here, and I'll actually draw it out for you guys, would have looked something like this. So here's the graph, and it would have looked something like this. But again, because the prices appreciate so much more afterward, it just looks like a little blip in the radar. All right, so back to AMC. So what most people are wondering now, are we going to have a third squeeze making this current price action over here look minuscule? Now that I have no idea, and as well looking at GameStop, it's currently trading at $185.16. And compared to AMC, it's doing awful this year, only up 973.39% year to date. Unlike AMC, the peak for GameStop year to date actually happened in the first squeeze back at the end of January. Reaching a 52 week high of $483 per share, uh, which was that infamous SEC coming in and shutting things down and no one being able to press the buy button. Right now taking a look at the candlestick chart for AMC, every candlestick here represents one day. I've drawn these channels over here, these blue lines, to represent potential uh, areas of interest when it comes to buying and selling pressure. So this is how I'm thinking right now, and I'm actually gonna draw one more channel, probably around this 50, 51, $52 uh, range over here. Currently trading in this channel over here of about $38 roughly to about 52 or so. So a $14 channel. And back in July and August, we had dipped below this part of the channel, uh, trading within this other channel that I had drawn out between about $29, $30 to, to that $37, $38 mark. As well as we opened and closed at least four times this week below this 50 EMA, which is this green line over here, which acts as a technical indicator for buying and selling pressure as well. So a couple of weeks ago on September 13th, we tested this $52 mark at the top of the channel and it found selling pressure ever since. So right now, sitting at this $40 mark, where is AMC going moving forward. And the way I'm looking at AMC uh, in the short term is pretty much, does it break the $52 mark first or does it break the $30 mark first? Because if we break this $52 mark, then pretty much we could create a new channel uh, from that point to maybe let's say $65 roughly. At which point, if it does break this resistance point over here, uh, it could be, you could be looking at that $72 mark, which was that all time high. And if it breaks that, then the sky is a limit for AMC stock and uh, another potential squeeze could happen or who knows what. However, if we do break this $30 mark, uh, it could be really ugly for the stock because at that point, there's no real strong psychological support to, until maybe the top of the previous squeeze, which happened back at the end of January, which would be around $20. And so I could actually probably move this up a little bit, uh, but nothing's guaranteed. And as always, guys, with technical analysis, this is all voodoo. This is all how I'm perceiving the price action as well as the volume and the other indicators, but it could fall anywhere in between. It could go whatever, which way direction it wants, but if it hits those areas of interest, then that's when you gotta pay attention. 
And again, as much as this is voodoo in a way, at the same time, it does hold a lot of merit. And taking a look at GME, I don't know if I have any trend lines. I don't for this one. Uh, we can draw them right now. So let's say right here, this could be a good first one at about a hundred and let's say $45, or $150. This area over here, we could draw another one, easy one at about $350 because we see that selling pressure when we hit back in March as well as June. And we could probably draw one more at about, let's say this $240 mark over here. Uh, as it coincides really well with uh, the selling pressure back at the beginning of the month of September, as well as our resistance point for uh, the middle of June and the middle of March. And for good measure, we're going to draw one more uh, just over here where there was a little bit of buying pressure uh, back at the beginning of March. So GameStop does not trade as nicely on the charts as AMC. However, we can take some similar principles from the AMC chart and apply it to this one. And they don't always trade together, but a lot of the time if AMC is up 10%, then uh, it's not uncommon for GME to be up significantly as well. However, not always. And here's another example of which point is it going to break first. Is it going to break this $235, $240 mark first and then get into this channel over here? Or is it going to break this $150 mark? And then at that point, you'd be flirting with low $100 and then maybe even below that if it breaks that. So uh, it is unsettling in that sense. But at the same time, if you are an ape and you're holding for the long term and people are never going to be selling, uh, then you're hopeful and you're going to be buying it as it's going lower so that eventually uh, this break this $240 mark and so on. So I'm not in either one of these stocks, AMC or GME, and it's not a knock on the companies. I'm not in a lot of companies, actually, and it's not because I don't like them. It's because I just... I'm choosing not to trade or invest them. And I actually have tried trading AMC before and I paper handed very quickly. It's just not my style. I'm not good at it. Uh, I just, I'm not claiming I am. It, just, it is what it is. Now risks when it comes to these stocks are that, for example, a lot of people are getting their information from Wall Street bets, where we have to realize that a lot of these big hedgy and hedge funds and whatever, they have access to these Wall Street bets and they're ahead of the game. They have a lot more advanced tools than we will ever have as retail investors. So that's something we have to take into consideration first because they're in the game of maximum maximum extraction when it comes to taking our money away from us. And they aren't stupid. They've been doing it upon years and years. So that's for me where I think these stocks could be a little bit speculative because, again, the fundamentals, from what I've heard at least online, again, I haven't done crazy amounts of research into looking into these companies, but from what I'm reading online, it's a lot of hopium as well. Uh, again, not a knock, guys, but it's momentum. And the one sure thing when it comes to the stock market over the long term is fundamentals matter. Free cash flow matters. The amount of money and profitability these companies have over the long term are the most important things. And I mean, statistically, over time, that tends to be the most inaccurate measure of successful companies in the stock. Anything can happen. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Are you an ape? Are you investing or holding either one of these stocks for the long term? Let me know, guys, what you think as well. As always, subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next video.